Resultant forces. Learning objectives. At the end of this video, you should be able to explain the difference between vector and scalar quantities and give some examples. Use arrows to represent forces acting on an object. Know what a resultant force is. And calculate the resultant force on an object. A scalar quantity has magnitude size only. 40 meters per second. A vector quantity has magnitude size and a specific direction. 40 meters per second west. A vector quantity may be represented by an arrow. The length of the arrow represents the magnitude or size and the direction of the arrow represents the direction. 2 meters per second east. 4 meters per second east. 2 meters per second south. 4 meters per second south. Here are some examples of scalar quantities and vector quantities. Scalar quantities. Size only. Vector quantities. Size and direction. Distance. Speed. Mass. Energy. Displacement. Velocity. Weight. Force. Acceleration. Momentum. Notice in the table that some scalars have an equivalent vector. For example, if you give distance a direction, it becomes a displacement. If you give speed a direction, it becomes velocity. Resultant force. A number of forces acting on an object may be replaced by a single force that has the same effect as all the original forces acting together. This single force is called the resultant force. Students should be able to calculate the resultant of two forces that act in a straight line. So, here are some examples. Many forces acting on an object. Resultant force. Example 1. 3 newtons left, 5 newtons right, resultant force, 2 newtons to the right. Example 2. 6 newtons left, 2 newtons right, resultant force, 4 newtons to the left. Example 3. 4 newtons left, 4 newtons right, resultant force, 0 newtons, so no direction. Remember, forces are vector quantities, so when we calculate the resultant force, we must say what size it is and what direction it is acting in. Do you understand how I've worked out the resultant force when I knew what forces were acting on each object. Let's look at example one. Think about tug of war. If one team is pulling to the left with a force of three newtons, and one team is pulling to the right with a force of five newtons, the team pulling to the right is stronger by two newtons. So the resultant force is two newtons to the right. Apply the same technique to examples two and three. Notice in example 3, the force pulling to the left is the same size as the force pulling to the right. So the forces cancel out and the resultant force is zero. We call this balanced forces and I'll cover that in a different video. 
If the forces acting on an object are in the same direction, then they add together. Let's look at some examples of that. Example 4 2 newtons right, 3 newtons right. Resultant? 5 newtons to the right. Example 5 3 newtons right, 4 newtons right. Resultant? 7 newtons to the right. Example 6 2 newtons left, 1 newton left. Resultant force? 3 newtons to the left. Learning objectives. You should now be able to explain the difference between vector and scalar quantities and give some examples. Use arrows to represent forces acting on an object. Know what a resultant force is. And calculate the resultant force on an object. I hope you understand resultant forces now. Thanks very much and see you in the next video.